Well, uh, hello, um, fellow Texans. It's uh, time for Coffee Talk, right? Middle of the week, uh, and here we are, um, you know, a couple of minutes behind. Uh, but that was all because I needed to play that excerpt from that video about how Texit will help overcome electile dysfunction. Uh, we had a Coffee Talk question come in, and uh, it seemed to fit the bill, so I thought I would lead with that tonight. Uh, anyway, look, uh, welcome. For those of you that are brand new, I am Daniel Miller, president of the Texas Nationalist Movement, and this is that time of the week where I take a break, grab a cup of coffee, decompress a little bit uh, with you guys, and then get right back to it, right? Because uh, you don't stop until the job gets done. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, the price you pay for showboating uh, a little too early. Uh, because I, I get the distinct impression some of you out there are uh, showboating a bit and uh, taking your foot off the throttle. So we're going to have us a little coach talk tonight. Uh, that being said, uh, let us uh, dispense with uh, some of the business at hand. If you are watching on the YouTube channels, uh, either mine or the TNMs, uh, feel free to drop your questions in chat. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be taking those, Kara's right over there. And uh, she'll be funneling those questions. And, of course, you can always drop your questions to coffee talk at thetnm.org. Um, but, uh, you know, also Super Chat is active on the, the TNM's YouTube channel. So drop a little clinkery in the old can. Help us get the message out. And, man, have I got a funny one about that tonight. Oh, this is going to be this is going to be a big decompress for me. I hope you guys are ready for it. Uh, if you're watching on any of the Facebook pages, uh, shame on you. You should be off of Facebook and enjoying the new uh, TNM social mobile app and section of the TNM website. Uh, version 1.0 is going all right. Yeah, we got some things we need to do uh, to improve, and uh, we're doing that every single solitary day. New features on the the, the horizon, uh, improvements to it. But I got to tell you, uh, this is probably, uh, from a technology perspective, probably one of the best 1.0 releases I've seen. Uh, that I've personally gone through. So uh, I'm I'm super happy for all of you that are uh, over there helping us, uh, that are participating, that are posting your pictures, your videos, uh, your status updates, your connections, uh, joining up to your local groups. And, um, you know, I've got a little tidbit for you tonight, too, if you're in a local group over there, uh, how you can get a little more directly involved and a little bit uh, of a tutorial that uh, I'm going to uh, hopefully walk you guys through to explain to you how you can connect with other people. Okay. Uh, so if you're watching anywhere else, whether it's a uh, Twitter on our Roku channel, like on your TV or on the TNM mobile app, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, going to be, going to be real interesting. It's been, a, uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie. The, the last week has been a, a bit of a whirlwind, right? So we, we did coffee talk last week and, uh, that was right on the heels of, uh, the Republican party of Texas dropping the news about, um, the, um, the, the platform, right? You know what? Uh, less talk more coffee tonight. I think I'm not going to lie. We've been, we've been really busy. OK, uh, you know, but uh, we had two big bombshells uh, drop last week. Right. When we did coffee talk, we had um, the the two platform planks. The results came out and, and we'll talk about that here in a second, uh, because there is some definite confusion. Of course, the media going absolutely crazy uh, over the over the results of that thing. You know, we the, the fact that it was proposed was one thing, but the margins by which both past just did their heads in right and then of course right on the heels of that was the release of that bombshell poll where it showed that 66 percent of likely voters here in texas uh, are ready to bounce which is uh you know it tracks with what we've been saying for a very long time so i'm going to share this with you right so we have this really large email list and you know every time we send one out we get somebody to unsubscribe. And when you unsubscribe and that, you know, look, no harm, no foul. You don't want to get the emails. I get that, but it gives you a place to, uh, to, to put in, uh, your reason for unsubscribing. And, you know, I, man, I review everything, any kind of report I can get my hands on. I mean, I try to keep my finger on the pulse of the organization, 
and, and understand what's going on from, you know, tip to tail. Right. And, and, uh, you know, as best I can, I mean, we're a, a, a large organization, but, but this was what was funny. So literally we had these two things hit. And of course it's not the only big things. I mean, it's, it's literally been the last two years has just been one great piece of news on top of the other advance after advance after advance. And so we send this email out. Uh, many of you may have received it, uh, talking about a big campaign reveal tomorrow night. I'll be talking about that later and telling you how you can participate in the webinar for it tomorrow night and learn more. Uh, but then this bad boy dropped on the desk unsubscribed via that catalyst campaign reveal with a reason it's going nowhere. A big disappointment. What? <laughs> what? I, I mean, what? Uh, wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, in, in the words of my parents, uh, some people would just complain if you hung them with a new rope, right? I mean, you just, you, how, how high do we have to run the scoreboard up on the opposition, right? Do you need that to be, uh, you know, was 66% not good enough? Was it, do you need 67%? Did you not need two plank? I mean, one we didn't get one. We got two planks. So was do we, did we need three? Right. I mean, we got a bill, a piece of legislation filed, made history last legislative session. Uh, do I mean, what, do we need two bills? I mean, do we? You know, what 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 do we need to do here? You know, some some people just don't know. I mean, their their timing is really really bad. Some people just have very poor timing. Um, and, and I got a kick out of it. You know, I don't, people, people ebb and flow like that. That doesn't matter. You know, that guy unsubscribed and we had probably in the time it took him to click that button, we probably had 20 or 30 more people, um, you know, register their support. So that, you know, that, that stuff doesn't bother me. It was just, it was the reason that I thought was hilarious. Uh, I got a kick out of it. Um, Wow. That's like the dude who sold his IBM stock, you know, when it was like a, a, a buck a share, two bucks a share, you know, I mean, you know, stuff like that, uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, I, I, I was amused and uh, I thought I'd share it with you and perhaps maybe you're amused by it as well. Uh, you saw it mentioned in there that there was an email that came out about the Catalyst campaign. I uh, mentioned it a moment ago, going to tell you about that tomorrow night uh, is going to be a special webinar hosted by our executive director, Nate Smith, on a project uh, that he and, and some of the rest of the team have been working on. Uh, it is going to be the largest fundraising campaign that the TNM has ever launched and, and uh, shared a lot of the details of why we're doing it and, and how we're going to do it and what the mechanisms are going to be. Uh, shared it with leadership a few nights ago, uh, and now we're going to reveal it to the rest of you. So uh, if you want to sign up, there are 500 slots available on the webinar, but uh, you guys fill those up. We may go ahead and, and bump it up. And of course, we'll have a live stream option available uh, in the mobile app as well. Of course, you won't be able to do all the cool things you can do as part of the webinar, but uh, you'll still be able to to um, watch the uh, presentation of the campaign launch and understand what it's going to entail. And, and folks, it's going to be huge, right? I, I've told you that we've got these milestones. I keep getting asked about what's next. Uh, and, and I say, look, we've got this major campaign that's getting ready to kick off in September. Not this catalyst campaign. This is the fuel that's going to help us get there. Uh, and, and the success of that campaign is going to flow directly into the general election in November. Uh, the pre-filing that happens two weeks later and on into the legislative session where we get to bludgeon uh, legislators, Republican legislators, with the fact that they are now part of a political party that has not one but two explicit calls for them to pass legislation to give us a vote on Texas independence. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do, and this is why I am admonishing people uh, to, to not, to not let up, don't, don't get 10 yards from the, the goal line and start showboating and decide you can stop running. You don't quit running until you're past the goal post, Right. And, and so, you know, this is, this is the thing people need to understand. It's like, okay, th this is great. This is massive progress, but it ain't over until we win the Texas vote. Right. And the things we have to do to win it are the things that we have to do to get it. 
right? Those are all, all of it builds on one another, right? This is this is the thing. This is not some fits and starts sort of thing. I, I talk about it in the book, which by the way, we're getting ready to launch a Texit 101 course on the website. So stay tuned for that. But I talk about it in the book, right? Is this short-term thinking mentality where people get locked in like they are their attention span gets locked into the you know the cycles with the tv commercials uh maybe maybe streaming will uh get rid of that but it, it's the same thing with a political apathy and amateurism is is they get their attention cycles locked into the election cycles right and and what happens is they they go and and they you know they put some effort in and they get excited for a little while and and then all of a sudden it's like, well, this ain't going to be quick. Oh no, something happened. I don't like, oh no, you know, and, and they decide they're going to, you know, they, they can't, they don't have it. Well, look, I I've made no bones about it. That the, the people that this fighter for right now it, it, are people that are mentally tough, right? People that are, are leaders. And some of you probably don't think of yourselves as leaders, but I want you to understand something is that people right now that that support Texas are probably sitting on the sidelines and watching you. They're looking to see what you do, whether you realize it or not. They're going, they're looking for you to walk the walk, talk the talk, walk the talk, right? They're, they're looking at you. And so whether you realize it or not, you are a leader. And you lead by example, and your passion, and enthusiasm, and, and and your mental toughness, and, and your ability to to go in there and persevere and persist and carry it all the way through. That's what people are looking for. Uh, look, you, you can't deny that we live in a in a day and age of, of people who uh, give up. I mean, they just you know. I mean, this is kind of where where we are. Why we are where we are. You know, when, when competition started handing out trophies and ribbons to everybody who also ran, um, you, you, you wound up with generations of people that are, that's their, that's their mentality. That's their mindset. And, and I don't, and I'm not trying to pin this on a single generation, right? Because we've all seen it, but there aren't, let, let, let me, un, let me help you understand something about this. When you're talking about the independence of, of our nation, the nation of Texas, when you're talking about our independence, there is no participation ribbon, right? There is no, there is no, oh, good job trophy, right? There is no second place because in the fight for independence, you either get it or you don't. Second place is the first place loser. And that's not where we want to be. We fought too long, too hard, and gained too much ground to lose. And, and to lose it to, you know, apathy or, uh, you know, discouragement or negativity or any of this other kind of, you know, touchy-feely crap, right? Because we've got to win. If you don't think it's serious, go try to buy gas. Go try to buy food. Or better yet, go look at the families here in Texas that are on the cusp, right, that are living paycheck to paycheck having to try to go buy those things, right? Or go look at the video of the people streaming across the border and then go look at the headline about the illegal alien who had already been deported, who, you know, slipped through because the border's got more holes than a Democrat jobs plan and raped a 10-year-old, right? This stuff is serious business. This is our lives. We win. Nobody can put their thumb on us anymore. We lose. It's for good. So, you know, right after the election, one of the things I told everybody, one of the slides I put up during the press session was get serious, you know, get some perspective, get upset, get serious. Uh, and, and let me tell you, a lot of you did. Why do you think that bombshell poll came out? Why do you think we were able to go in there to the RPT convention and, and just dominate? Look, uh, you know, I, we had our, our leadership meeting, um, Monday night. And one of the things Daphne talked about, Daphne Armour, our chief staff, one of the things she talked about was all the compliments that she has received at, at how wonderful our people were at the convention, how visible, how engaging, how positive, how passionate, what wonderful representatives of our cause they were. 
leaders. That's what I said. So, uh, you know, maybe I slipped into a little early coach talk. I don't know. I'll, I'll get back to that. But look, uh, here's something I wanted to share with you before I, I dive off into maybe a couple of questions and get into a, a little bit more. Uh, one of the things that has been extremely interesting um, has been watching uh, our folks decimate the opposition on social media. Uh, our social media warriors, or as you know, we used to refer to them, our online response corps, the orcs. Uh, they've been they've been just hacking, slashing, and burning the opposition because the opposition is what we've always said. They are weak. They, they lack any type of rationale, reason, or logic. They are just uh, embarrassingly weak. And so consequently, uh, our guys armed with knowledge, knowledge that they got from here, from the website at texitnow.org, uh, from just studying, being students, paying attention to what we're saying, uh, they're able to go in there and just absolutely decimate them. And, and one of the ones that, that I love, and you guys know this is a a personal kind of bone to pick for me is uh Texas versus white. I mean, uh, and, and guys th that are in the chat, you can go drop in there and, and talk about it at any time about how many times you've seen the opposition try to bring up the Supreme court said you can't do that. Right. So you decimate them on the constitution constitution doesn't say anything. So therefore it's reserved. To the, you decimate them on that. So what are they? Well, the Supreme court said, and they try to bring up Texas versus white. And you guys know I've, I've, I've destroyed, destroyed, destroyed Texas versus white on coffee talk more times than I can count. It is one of my favorite things to do, uh, because I think it's just a, a totally crappy Supreme court decision. Uh, and you know, and, and for these reasons, right. I even made it, made a little slide for you. Uh, but it, you know, it's, it's internally inconsistent right? It, it does not jive. The language internally does not jive. And we can talk about that some other time. Uh, there was a clear conflict of interest. Sam and P. Chase, the chief justice of, of the Supreme Court at the time, uh, because the case at controversy uh, dealt with his time, with an incident that happened with his time and tenure as secretary of the treasury under Lincoln. So there was a conflict of interest. Uh, Chase, in his opinion, has a faulty remembrance of history, um, you know, about the circumstances that led us away from or led those original states away from the Articles of Confederation to the Constitution of 1787. And he uses this thin chain of logic to reach his conclusion, which when I talk about a thin chain of logic, I mean that he takes one thing, he takes one thing, and then he connects it to another thing. And then to another thing, and to another thing, and to another thing, and all it, you know, if any of those things fails, his entire rationale disappears, right? So that's his thin chain of logic, and I've talked about that some. But tonight, what I want to talk about um, is uh, that Texas versus White was effectively overturned in 1905, and I've gotten, and the reason I do this is I've gotten a lot of questions about it. Okay. So if you've read the book or you've heard me talk about it, you've heard me mention a case called Jacobson v. Massachusetts. And, and oddly enough, Jacobson v. Massachusetts uh, got super, super popular, a lot of attention uh, during COVID because uh, Jacobson v. Massachusetts dealt with uh, forced vaccination by the state and the state's ability to impose fines for people who did not receive them. Okay. So, uh, but, but, Really and truly, that was the the, ta the main takeaway for all legal thought related to Jacobson v. Massachusetts doesn't really have to do with the compulsory vaccination issue. It deals with something else. So what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna just take a very brief moment tonight to talk about this. So those of you that are out there and you're pouring the Jacobson v. Massachusetts holy water on those you know brain sucking vampires, uh, will will understand it a little bit better, but. See, here's what it says in Texas versus White, and this is something that Chase said. Okay, this is in the syllabus, uh, and you can see in, in his majority opinion, he says, the union of states never was a purely artificial and arbitrary relation. Um, okay. Uh, it began uh, among the colonies and grew out of common origin, 
mutual sympathies, kindred principles, similar interests, and geographical relations. I mean, isn't that all sort of political and economic unions uh, of any type, right? Trade agreements or uh, mutual defense pacts. I mean, you know, those sorts of things. Okay. So he's not saying anything new there because it was confirmed, but, but here's where he goes off the rails, right? When I talk about that thin chain of logic, it was confirmed and strengthened by the necessities of war and received definite form and character and sanction from the articles of confederation. By these, the Articles of Confederation, the Union was solemnly declared to be perpetual. Okay. That's what he says because the words perpetual, on you know, perpetual are in the Articles of Confederation. So then this is what he says. And when these articles were found to be inadequate to the exigencies of the country, the Constitution was ordained, quote, to form a more perfect union. Okay. So essentially what he's saying is, is that the colonies became states and they were tied together by all these things. And then it was formalized by the articles of confederation. And then the constitution, rather than replacing the articles, essentially by virtue of what it said in the preamble, just sort of built on top of it. So essentially declaring the Constitution an amending instrument to the Articles of Confederation. And so because the Articles of Confederation declared it a perpetual union and the preamble declares it to be a more perfect union, somehow those two things are tied together. Well, it, interestingly enough, you say, okay, for a more perfect union, where did he get that? Well, he got it in the preamble, right? We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. So you know, as I have said, it, it's it's ridiculous uh, logic because he's you know he's essentially saying, well, it's a more perfect union and it was perpetual before, so now it's more perpetual, right? There's no such thing, right? It's it's ridiculous, right? But his linkage to any type of constitutional prohibition is solely the preamble. Okay, I want you to think about that. It's solely the preamble to the Constitution. That is his only linkage to the entire legal construct of perpetual union. So the world kept spinning, right? Chase gave his opinion. Things blew up. He gave his opinion. And then in 1905, in a case about forced vaccinations, this is what came out of the Supreme Court. Literally, the first line of the the uh, the syllabus or the opinion from Jacobson v. Massachusetts. The United States does not derive any of its substantive powers from the preamble of the Constitution. It cannot exert any power to secure the declared objects of the Constitution unless, apart from the preamble, such power be found in or can be properly implied from some express delegation in the instrument. What are they saying? If there's nothing in the Constitution beyond that, that U.S. Constitution, that speaks to that preamble, then the federal government gets no powers from the preamble. Otherwise, they could just say, well, well let's just take, let's just take some random phrase out of the preamble and We'll just say, well, that's a power of the federal government. Jacobson v. Massachusetts said that's not how it works. And so you, you take that off the table, and what you've done is you've broken the chain, that thin chain of logic. You've severed it because Jacobson v. Massachusetts, in, the, in those handful of sentences at the very beginning, effectively overturns Texas v. White. Because if all the declarations allegedly made, and we could talk about how, you know, how, what's, what's law, what's dicta, right? Because the courts don't legislate, Supreme Court can't make law, but, and we could talk about what's dicta, AKA commentary and what's actually actionable, but, but let's just talk about this because the entire premise, the entire premise of Texas versus white is this concept of perpetual union 
built upon coming, you know, from the Articles of Confederation, drawn into the Constitution solely by the preamble, and everything above that falls if the preamble gives the federal government no power, and we know it doesn't. They said so, right? And we know that Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution lists everything states are forbidden from doing, and withdrawing is not in there. And we know the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution says that any powers not granted to the federal government or prohibited to the states are reserved to the states and the people. So therefore, the decision is ours and ours alone. Article 1, Section 2 of the Texas Constitution, post-Texas v. White, all political powers inherent in the people, and the people have at all times an inalienable right to alter, reform, or abolish their government in such manner as they may think expedient. Texas versus White is deader than Judas Iscariot. And, and the fact that they continue to bring it up, and the fact that our people dump Jacobson v. Massachusetts on them, and it shuts them up, makes me immensely happy. So keep the fight up and keep tearing them up. Every time they bring up this, this ridiculous concept, this ridiculous idea that Texas versus white has any meaning in 2022, smoke them because they got it coming. So there you go. Hmm. All right. So uh, let me do this. Let me get to some questions. Uh, let's see what we got going on over here with the questions. Uh, real quick. Um, yep. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Lee. Okay. Here we go. Lee wants to know, will the seminar, the webinar be recorded tomorrow night, uh, has a County organization meeting. Yep. There, there are going to be meetups, uh, tomorrow night. And I do believe it's going to be recorded, uh, and available for you to watch later, Lee. So, uh, you'll be good to go on that one. Uh, all right. Uh, next Carlton says the new app is great. Thank you, Carlton. I appreciate that. Uh, I know you've been all through that because you've sent me actual private messages on there. So thank you for doing that. Uh, and, uh, look that, that reminds me too. look, um, you, it, it, everyone who signs on to the website, uh, whether you're on the web, the website or the app, uh, you you get added to a group called taxi and meet and greet right? A group inside of our social network, uh, where you can go in there, introduce yourself, visit with anybody, uh, and connect with them, right? Just drop in there and say, Hey, I want to connect with anybody. But also, uh, if your address is updated in the system, you automatically get up, you automatically get added to a local group in the town where you live. Uh, and I would encourage everyone to go into that local group, Join that local group, maybe join ones around you, right? Some are currently organizing, some are formed. Uh, you can filter those and, and look and see what's what. Uh, but go introduce yourself and say, look, connect with me. Like, comment, let's let's connect, right? Because this is really about organizing and connecting. That's, that's the entire purpose of this. And so if you're not... Um, if you're not on there and, and talking with others and, and posting in these groups and saying, look, what can we do? Uh, then you're doing it wrong, right? Because that's what it's for and that's what it's going to take. And it's a phenomenal new tool for you to use. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's one from John. John says, is there a whip count on this movement? Um, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about legislators that are in support. Uh, you said you've emailed all 103 Republican members of the legislature and not a single one has gotten back to you. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Um, most of them light staff when the session is out. Uh, most of them are worried about campaigning. Uh, but also, uh, if you go uh, look at the website uh, and download our guide to legislative activism, uh, the one to how to properly uh, advocate for Texas uh, Independence Referendum Act, uh, you will see that email is the absolute worst way to engage your legislators, right? There is a hierarchy that we have gotten straight from the legislators. And, and let me tell you, um, you know, email, they rank it all the way down at the bottom. You are lucky if you get a response to any email. And some of you may, some of them, 
may deal with it a little bit more, but it's absolutely the worst. So I would encourage you to head over, log into the website, head over to the download section and download that guide uh, that we have for free. I mean, it's there uh, for the taking. And I think when you register on the website, the first page you land on has a bunch of resources. And I do believe that that's one of them. Uh, I actually think there is also a video uh, that we've got about how to properly um, how to properly advocate for the legislation as well. So definitely check that out. Uh, okay, so let's go here. Um, Nathan says, policy question with a Texit, what would we do with federal armed forces in Texas, i.e. Fort Bliss? Uh, you said food. Speaking of, I didn't even I didn't even tell you guys. Kara asked me tonight. She's like, hey, what do you want for dinner? And um, my only response was breakfast tacos because sometimes the menu just writes itself, right? And that's what we had. It was wonderful. Uh, but I think you meant hood. Okay, so Nathan, um, here's here's what's got to shake down, okay? We, we get to the fourth stage, right? So post-Texit vote, four stages, constitutional issues, statutory issues, international covenants, treaties, and agreements. And the fourth stage is the negotiated issues, okay? That's Social Security trust fund stuff, uh, federal debt uh, negotiation, what our portion is going to be. And I think there's a good argument to be for it to be zero. Uh, but one of those things is going to have to deal with the disposition of federal property uh, inside of the, of the new independent taxes. Uh, and so by, by rights, um, because that was, that land was uh, probably a, set aside as a federal reservation, which is typically the way that most of those things are handled, um, that would obviously revert back to, to Texas. However, uh, there are some scenarios that exist. Uh, history has shown us where, uh, countries that have withdrawn from others, uh, particularly from political unions or things of that nature, uh, do engage in mutual defense compacts uh, with their former, uh, you know, the former union or a country that they were a part of. And so uh, since we do share common defense concerns with the United States, there is a high likelihood that you could see uh, Texas in a mutual defense agreement. Now, you know, what the scope and extent of that is, I think will ultimately be up to Texas uh, and what we're willing to participate in. Um, you know, whether we're willing to go down the road of uh, military adventurism or if we're going to be concerned primarily with national defense. So, um, you know, it, but the disposition of those bases will obviously be on the table uh, for negotiation. And ultimately, um, I could see them, you know, continuing to serve in the capacity as military bases. The, the properties there, uh, the facilities are there. Uh, and whether that's for a, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, mutual defense uh, compact or just solely for a Texas military. Uh, the fact is, is that they're there and it would be foolish to not use them. Uh, but good question. Thank you for that. And there's more. Uh, if you go to uh, texitnow.org, uh, there's a, a whole chunk of answers about military and defense questions. Uh, okay. So here we go. Here's a super chat from Roosevelt media news. Uh, thank you for the super chat. It is off topic. Uh, why do they require a notary to claim the over 65 reduction? I, I do not know. Um, because they want to make it ridiculously difficult for you to get out from under property tax, uh, which I think we've been pretty clear, uh, property tax needs a stake put through its heart, uh, never to rise from the grave again. It is heinous and it is immoral. Uh, okay, here we go. Here's another one. Simple Dan uh, Forever said, oh, super chat. Hey, Dan, thank you very much. Uh, join the app. Here's five dollars for the calls. Some of the nonsense coming from DC is the best advertising for Texas. <laughs> Please sue our accusers for slander. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the super chat and thank you for the uh, the hat tip to uh, Matt, uh, Ma excuse me, Mac Duncan's article uh, that he po that uh, he wrote for the website asking the question. Uh, should we, um, should we, uh, start to sue people who accuse us of treason and sedition? Um, you know, I, it, it, it is a, a legitimate question 
and uh, one that I think um, we should start to. And, and look, that that really plays into what I'm going to talk about next, right? Going to be going to carry us through probably the rest of this. Uh, but I'll, I'll get to that here in a moment. And you're right. I mean, this nonsense out of DC definitely does not hurt us. Um, it definitely helps. But we're gonna we're gonna get to that. We're gonna talk about the the slander thing. And and if you if by the way, if you haven't read the article, you need to go read it. Because when when and I know you have Dan, uh, but those of you who haven't need to because this has been kind of a an ongoing issue, right? Where the opposition, when they get painted into a corner, that you know they like to lob out that that idea of treason and sedition, right? And those things are you know those are defined crimes, and under law, that's called defamation per se. Uh, you accuse somebody of a cr- of, of a crime of having committed a crime, uh, and they didn't. They they're not that. You're just doing it to be defamatory. Uh, damages are automatic, and you can you can go read the details in the article. But this is what we this is what I told somebody years and years ago, uh, who stood up at a, at the Jefferson County Convention and decided he wanted to say we were all guilty of sedition and treason. And, and I got up and just told him said, look. If you think we're committing a crime, why don't you call 911 instead of getting up here and, and bloviating in front of everybody, right? The, the more appropriate venue, if you you suspect someone of a criminal act, is pick up the phone, dial 911, say, I see a crime. Not get up and give a speech about it or tweet about it or do something stupid like that. So if you believe what's really coming out of your mouth, then you'll pick up the phone and you'll make that phone call. He shut up. And that's what most of them do. Because it's, you know, they're just ridiculous. So uh, if you get a chance, folks, go read the article. It's really, really awesome. And, uh, hey, thanks for joining the app. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yowzers. Uh, all right, Dan. Uh, thank you for the super chat as well. Daniel Rice, thank you so much. Mm. And uh, let's get to this one here. Um, yeah, this is a this is a great question here. Uh, John wants to know, will Texas continue to honor its debts to other states, the federal government, and the international governments? Look, this is this is the if if the state of Texas as an entity has racked up debts, then that debt is still good, right? That's that is a question of succession, not in the way that people talk about it, how they you know mispronounce or misspell secession, but it's succession, right? So you you see you're going to see this word not the misused one that the opposition does right but you're going to see this word succession a lot when uh you start talking about the mechanics of texas okay so treaties there is a treaty succession debt succession right debts and obligations and, and that that actually kind of goes both ways right so um, yeah, I mean, if, if, te- if the state of Texas as an entity owes money, then that will carry over, right? So if, if somehow the state of Texas sold debt to Japan or somebody, right? Because there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on or sold bonds that, that carries over through succession, not secession. I don't send me hate mail. I know the difference between the words. Okay. <clears throat> but then your question is, will, and, and I want to break this down because your question says honor its debts to other states. Okay. So if there's debt on the books to other states, the federal government, if the federal government is the holder of debt for Texas, right? And international governments, same thing. That is a completely separate discussion than what I call the federal debt, I wish the rest of you would stop calling it the national debt. And I know I called it national debt in my book because so many people said, well, what is the federal debt, right? But I really wish we would stop referring to all things federal as national because it ain't. It's federal. It's the federal debt, okay? <clears throat> uh, that is a completely separate issue. And that completely separate issue is going to be contingent on a lot of things. I, we talk about it. There's a, a whole article about it at texitnow.org. I talk about it in the book. Uh, and there's an article that we're getting ready to post uh, from Terry Holsey, uh, where he argues that uh, basically that uh, we don't know stink 
on the uh, the federal debt. So uh, he he makes an excellent case. I I think it's a case uh, you know, and and I don't disagree with him. Uh, I I fully agree with the outcome. I just agree with it for a different reason, and, and I believe that the math bears out. Right, I, I believe that we can effectively show that uh, that Texas, beyond a shadow of a doubt, owes the federal government zero dollars on the federal debt. But I'll also echo the sentiments of Marcus Ruiz Evans from the CalExit movement, who, when faced with that very same question, uh, tells people this: Absolutely, we will. Uh, they they are perfectly willing to accept their share of the federal debt uh, at whatever percentage that is, and in return, they expect that percentage of the assets that go with it. And that means planes and tanks and bombs and, uh, you know, buildings and, and everything else. And you know what? I, I think that's a phenomenal retort. If you want us to pay a percentage of it, then we get all the crap that our money was used to buy, right? What, what you, you borrowed in our name, you expect us to pay it. So you're going to give us all the stuff, right? I mean, you, you don't get to give us, uh, to ask us for money, and not give us the stuff that was used to to um, buy with that money, and then of course you know one of my favorites is you know look if if we absolutely have to take a portion of the federal debt that's fine we'll just repay it back at the same rate as the federal government. It's all kinds of ways to deal with that, but thank you for your uh, question, John. Okay, uh, let me uh, let's let's tackle this. Um, because uh, this is something that I, I really, really want to talk about tonight. Um, you know, this is my time to decompress. And <laughs> so I get to talk about some of the things I want to talk about. And this is a big one. Look, and I alluded to it uh, all throughout because this has been, this has been on my mind uh, as I have watched our people go out and be phenomenal and how I've watched some people try to do their victory dance celebrations and let the foot off the gas or get all demure, right? Now, one of the things that, that I have said um, for many, many years uh, is that the toughest fight that we had was not with the opposition or with the federal government, but uh, with ourselves, right? Whether it's a lack of self-confidence, I, I used to refer to it as the mother of all inferiority complexes, uh, where, you know, we, we felt, you know, we're Texan, we're, we're you know, big and bad. And, you know, we got, you know, come and take it and all that, but always on these issues of the stuff that it was going to take to get to independence, you know, we, we would see, uh, some, timidity that I was like, man, I just don't get, you know, like we're seeing out of the, the elected officials. Right. And, and, and it's the thing that has always, I think, frustrated all of us, everyone on here, we've all been frustrated with the, the elected, the elected officials is when we would get support, right. They would be, oh yeah, you know, I'm all, I'm all for it, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But when it, when it came time to actually do something about it, you know, they, they had a million and one excuses while they couldn't do it. And boy, they, they would just shrink up, you know? Uh, and, and it's, you know, and it's one of the reasons that, that we loved what Kyle Biederman did right as state representative, Kyle Biederman had the, the courage, the, the attitude to go in there and go, you know what? Article one, section two, baby, let's put this thing to a vote. You know, not sure where he, you know, not sure where he was going to be on the thing, you know? probably leaning to vote yes, but that's between him and the ballot box, right? But at least willing to step out and publicly do it. And man, you know, all hell rained down on him. I prepared him. I told him it was going to happen. I said, but the other side of that is you would be held as a hero by people like us and others who have been waiting for electeds to take that leadership step. So, uh, you know, th this is this is the thing. But, you know, I showed you these articles. You know, we had these two. That, that popped and I, and I want you to just take a minute and I want you to let it soak in. Okay. Because this is not, I, I want you to understand this is not showboating. This is not, this is not a victory dance. You know, it is, it is okay to celebrate when, when we get wins. Uh, but, but I want you to think about this as it stands right now. And I don't care what, you know, Travis, the coward Clarity says, or, you know, Jeff Leach or any of those people, I don't care what they say. They don't respect 
their their the party that they're in, you know. Uh they they don't. Uh and so, you know, you, you take a look at these numbers and understand the dominant political party in Texas. Two planks. You can say the electives don't obey it, but it doesn't matter. The voters expressed their will, right? The the representatives of the voters, right, of, of the party expressed their will in massive numbers. You know, this it wasn't a squeaker. It wasn't a 50%, 50.1%. You know, one plank was 80%, the other was 88%. I mean, that's a slam dunk any way you slice it. And then the on the heels of that, that bombshell poll, 66% of Texans are ready for a tech. I mean, they want out. That's two thirds. That's a super majority. Even with a five point margin of error, it still smokes them. That that's, that's almost six points more, even with a margin of error, six points more than, than Brex, the pro Brexit side got. I mean, it's, it's a slam dunk, but it's not time to celebrate because it's not done. But, but this is what I want all of you to understand. Because <clears throat> I, I see many of you out here, and, and you, you're doing a lot of over-explaining, right? And, and I'm, 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 I'm there, right? I, I can talk about this to the Cowboys. I have fun. I love talking about Texas independence. I love working for it even more, okay? But here is my, ad, here is my admonition to you. Those numbers are telling you to stop playing defense. Those numbers are telling you that you can now turn to all of these naysayers, all of these people, all these fear mongers, all these people, and and make them explain themselves. Because we know if this goes to a vote tomorrow, it wins, and not by little, by a lot. So we've got to start as individuals and as a team fighting this fight like we are on the offense. Now, we're always on the offense. I I have always been offense, offense, offense. But, you know, and and you sometimes you got to explain some things. I'm not saying don't explain things. But when these opposition people come at you, right, and they want to ask you 50 million questions about Texas and make you justify everything and do all this other crap, what you need to do is go on offense. Make them justify why we need to stay, right? It's just like the question I ask all the time. If Texas was already a self-governing independent nation, knowing everything you know about the federal government, would you join today? And if you wouldn't vote to join, then why would you ever vote to stay? Those people on the opposition that are holding up, that are throwing up all this crap about it being unconstitutional and Texas versus wide, and meh, 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 and too hard, and all this, all this other kind of whiny, thumb-sucking bull crap, right? Put them on the defense. So what they are saying is they want to continue to saddle us with $30 trillion worth of debt. Message received, right? They are totally fine with Texas being the one of the top states for human and sex trafficking. They are perfectly fine with an illegal immigrant raping a 10-year-old child. They need to be on the defense. They need to be the ones justifying why we should stay. We don't have to justify crap. We know if it goes to a vote tomorrow, we win. They lose. Make them justify. Make them go on defense. Make them justify their position. And here's what you're going to find. They cannot justify it. It is unjustifiable to keep us in a political, economic, and cultural union that is doing its dead-level best every single solitary day to crush us to powder, to reduce our rights to privileges, to expose our citizens to harm and danger, to further strip us of our God-given inalienable rights, particularly the right of self-government. Justify it. Give me some great overriding reason why all of these concerns and problems and challenges we have with the federal system should mysteriously evaporate. And don't give me baseball and apple pie and some nostalgia bull crap when a single mother with a couple of kids is fighting to feed her children 
because President Potato Head and the neo-Marxists in Washington, D.C. can't find the off switch on the printing press, right? And don't tell me, don't, don't tell me that there's any kind of over it because it's going to have to be one heck of a reason to beat out the, the suffering and the lack of security and the problems that our citizens have along the uh, counties along the Rio, in the Rio Grande Valley. I mean, how do you justify leaving our borders wide open to all comers, to all of them? You don't. How do you justify giving up control of our border to the drug cartels? How do you, how do you do that? How do you do it? You don't. And so, folks, I'm not telling you to not have conversations about this, but what I'm telling you is it's time to go on the offense. It's past time. If you are still playing defense, understand you are now not just the majority, you are the super majority in Texas. You are 66% of Texas voters. You are in the majority. This issue is going to be the hottest issue until it gets done, and I guarantee that that's going to be the case because I know you're going to make it so. Because as much as they have tried to sweep this under the rug, as much as they have tried to keep this thing out of the media, as much as they have tried to deny this thing oxygen, they can't do it because of you. We fight like hell every single solitary day to reach as many people and uh, as many Texas voters as we possibly can. And that's where you come in, where the media won't give this auction, where they just print the propaganda over and over and over and all the lies and all the untruths and telling us that we can't do it. You are the ones that lead. You are the ones that carry the torch. You are the ones that connect with the voters and tell Texans this can happen. And as a matter of fact, it's happening right now. That's you. I can only do so much. The leadership team can only do so much. We create the framework, but it is important that every single person that supports this understands how important it is to get in the fight, to help us organize, to help us connect with voters, because here's the, here's the bottom line, right? This is, this is what it is. If you are not connecting people with the TNM right now, you're wasting your time and you're wasting theirs. Because I can't tell you how many times we have heard from people, it happens every week, oh my God, I've been looking for you my entire life. Where have you been? Well, guess what? It would have been awesome if we'd have connected with them two years earlier and all of those other people. So we could go out there and get this thing done. It, it is a massive undertaking, and we need all hands on deck. It's going to take everything. This is the last mile of the marathon, friends. This is the last mile of the marathon. Now, are you going to be Leon Lett with the Dallas Cowboys who decided to showboat 10 yards too early and gets the ball knocked out of your hand and miss a touchdown? Is that going to be you, right? Are you going to showboat a little bit early and be like, well, you know, we're so close if everybody believes in it. You know what that is? Somebody who is willing to take something that they did not work for is either a kid at Christmas or a Bernie Sanders voter. I mean, that's just the way it is. And so do something. Put some effort into it. Make it happen because, look, Kara said this many, many years ago. I loved it. If I could get it painted on my wall up here, I would. Independence is achieved. It is not received. And it is absolutely 100% the gospel. So you got to get out there and you got to make this happen. You got to stop playing defense and you got to start playing offense and quit nickel and diamond with all these doggone, um, you know, these opposition. You put them in their spot. You make them step two and justify where they are, and then you move on because ultimately we are not looking to convince anyone right now. It is not the time, right? Now is not, but we are looking for the convinced. 
Those 66% of the people that are out there, those are the people we're looking for. Those are the people we're trying to connect with because we have to start now on that campaign to be able to ensure that we can get them to where they need to be when we need them there to not only get the vote, but to win the vote, right? It's not just a get out the vote campaign. It's a get out the people so we can get out to go vote campaign, right? Two stages. So every second you spend with these knotheads, every extra second you spend with a knothead is one second away from going out there and helping us accomplish what needs to be accomplished, which is connecting Texas voters that support tech that oh man really will connecting Texas voters with the TNM so we can organize force multiplier, right? Go out there, organize and win. That is what we're doing. And that's why we need your help. So look, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to get all coachy tonight, but you know what? This is, this is it. The last mile of the marathon. And so the mantra is not, well, let off the gas. The mantra is push, push, focus, finish, and win. This is how we win. So I, I am, as you can see, quite excited. And, and I am ready. Look, we're looking for people right now that will help us go out there and win Texas independence. Look, I, I, none of us are looking to be, you know, um, you know, social workers or therapists. We're looking for people that want to win, that have the will to win, that want Texas independence as, as much as we do, that want to see this happen in our lifetimes. We've, you know, over the years, we've lost so many people, but it does take time for these things. But we want to see people that have the gumption and the will to win and the passion to make it happen and the discipline to get it done. And that's, those are the people that we're looking for. We're looking for that old spirit Texans, right? Those old spirit Texians, like the people that took to the walls at the Alamo or hoisted the come and take it flag at Gonzales or marched with the Texian army in Sam Houston and won our independence at San Jacinto. That is the spirit that we need. And that is the spirit that I know so many of you have. And uh, doggone, you know, uh, if, if I don't start wrapping this thing up, I'm going to be on here an, another hour. And none of us could stand that because I'll break out the charts. I mean, it'll get ridiculous. So we don't need to do that. Um, so that being said, folks, uh, I want to thank you so much uh, for being here with me tonight. You know, we're going to go win. That's what we need to do. A uh, quick reminder, uh, if you are not a member of the Texas Nationalist Movement, head over to tnm.me slash join. That is tnm.me slash join. And of course, uh, if you have not volunteered, uh, I mean, after that little spiel, right? Did I run? Did I run some people off? Maybe I doubt it. TNM.me slash volunteer, uh, and of course, uh, you know those local groups. So head over to the website, uh, get you know, get your support registered if you haven't done it already, uh, and get in the fight. Get joined up in your local group. If there is not a leader in your local group, if it is not officially a local group, says it's currently organizing. There will be a tab on there that says organize this group. Go be that leader that we talked about tonight. Okay, folks. Uh, and uh, look, let me just do another plug for this. If you want to be a part of that Catalyst campaign launch tomorrow night, head over to tnm.me slash Catalyst. That is tnm.me slash Catalyst. And uh, I think it's, I don't know what time it's going to be tomorrow. I don't have it right here in front of me, but you'll see it. It's there. Just go, go register, sign up. All right, uh, time to wrap up. I got to get another cup of coffee and then uh, I got to get back to work. So I will do as I do every week and leave you with the words of Sam Houston, who said that Texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations. I believe that time is now. And the question is, will you stand with her? Good night, everyone. Let's go win.